Welcome to this third video in the video series. This video will focus on soil properties and processes. The learning targets for this video are to determine the importance of soil to ecosystems and their distribution, to create a concept map showing the process of soil formation and impacts of climate, topography, parent materials, and weathering, to label soil profiles with soil horizons, to identify ecosystem services that are provided by soils, to analyze factors contributing to soil erosion and pollution, and to describe soil conservation measures being employed in the agricultural industry. Let's start out by talking about the formation of soils. Soils are important because they support all terrestrial food webs. And soils form from rocky parent materials through weathering processes that include biological, physical, mechanical, chemical weathering processes. Let's take a look at the diagram shown here. Starting on the left side, we begin with an unweathered rocky surface. That rocky surface may have some fractures and cracks in it through which water can start to precipitate downwards and start to dissolve away and open up those fractures and cracks, further disintegrating the rock. Some plants might start to get a hold there, as we see in the second panel. We've got a little bit of organic material forming at the surface. And continuing downward from the surface, weathering through leaching of, of elements from the organic material and through water flowing down through those cracks. We're starting to develop some of our initial soil horizons here, where we have bedrock at the bottom and then our sea horizon, or our weathered parent material horizon, forming just above that bedrock layer. In the third panel, we have an increase again in organic matter that's forming at the surface. Now, instead of just supporting some small plants, we're starting to support some larger plants, maybe some shrubs, as mineral particles are present on the surface. We're starting to get some distinctive soil horizons. You can start to see a top soil A layer horizon forming there. And as water precipitates or seeps down through that soil, we're getting increased leaching of minerals moving down from that A horizon in through what will eventually form the B horizon into the weathered C horizon and down towards the bedrock. And in the fourth panel, we're showing a well-developed soil. So you have organic material, the O horizon at the surface, underlain by a top soil horizon. That's where most of your root growth is going to be. The B horizon, which is a light-colored leached horizon, down into the C horizon, where we have the weathered parent material, and finally, the bedrock at the bottom. Now, as you might imagine, Climate plays a pretty significant role in soil horizon. It can have a tremendous impact on the rate at which soils form and on the types of soils that form. Topography also impacts soil horizons and their formation. So as you might expect, if you're on a steep slope, it's going to be pretty hard to form a thick soil. Soil composition. Soils are made of combinations of mineral matter, organic matter, air, and water. When soil scientists look at soils, they look at soil profiles, which are vertical sections of the soil that show the different soil horizons that are present. Now, not all soil horizons have all of these horizons present, but in this case, we're going to look at a cartoon of one that shows the horizons so we can understand what they're composed of. At the top, we have humus or the organics, that's the O layer underlain by a top soil, which is rich in organic material and rich in minerals. The subsurface B horizon doesn't have much organic material. It's rich in minerals, and water flows through there, leaching or dissolving out some of those minerals, carrying it downward into the C horizon, which is dominated by weathered parent material, and finally underlain by the bedrock. Soils are important because they provide ecosystem services. To begin with, we all know that soils are a medium for plant growth. Well, they're also important in recycling systems for nutrients and for organic wastes. They're habitats for soil organisms. They're engineering mediums for us to build on. 
and they are systems for water supply and water purification. So they provide all of those services, ecosystem services for us. Soils across the globe are in trouble in many places. Oftentimes, soil erosion is a significant factor, whether it's by water or by wind or by human activities. All of these things that cause soil to erode reduce the fertility of soil and reduce the productivity. They can also increase sediment and pollution, especially from fertilizers in local lakes and rivers. A particular type of soil pollution that's damaging is salinization. This occurs when irrigation water containing dissolved salts builds up in those irrigated soils. When the water evaporates and the soils dry out, it leaves behind those deposits of salts. In the case of a salinized soil, the plants that are trying to grow there fail to thrive. Some soil conservation practices are having a big impact. Things like conservation tillage shown in the top picture. In this case, you can see where a farmer has left residue from a previous year's crop to try to protect the soil from eroding away, and it's been partially successful. Crop rotations help to reduce nutrient stripping and reduce pests. So in this circle diagram, you can see a rotation between corn, soybeans, and wheat. Contour plowing reduces erosion by following the topography around rather than plowing in straight rows. And we're all familiar with terracing, things like rice paddies, but it's more common than that. Terracing reduces erosion and allows farming to occur on steeper slopes. I think we're ready to review the learning targets. Determine the importance of soil to ecosystems and their distribution. Create a concept map showing the process of soil formation, impacts of climate, topography, parent materials, and weathering. Label soil profiles with different soil horizons. Identify ecosystem services provided by soils. Analyze factors contributing to soil erosion and pollution. And finally, describe soil conservation methods being employed in the agricultural industry. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz, and I'll see you in class.